uh, each day and, Lord, through all of our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, there's, uh, Psalms 37 is broken up in its uh, kind of a, a, a approach to, it speaks to the righteous from verses 1 down to about first, uh, down to verse t- uh, 12. And from verse 12 up to about verse number 22, it speaks to the wicked. And then it speaks to the righteous again down to about verse 31. And then it goes to, so it goes back and forth speaking to the righteous and to the wicked. And so we're just going to take off tonight and just feed through this little pasture of the Lord. Verse number one says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. You know something that uh, is going on right now. If you're not careful, you're fretting over evildoers. I love this passage of scripture. I mean, there is a lot of evil going on. Just uh, uh, Bob just mentioned about these crazy Islamics, you know, uh, taking 21 Christians that they've captured over there in Egypt and beheading them on video and putting on video. I'm telling you something, folks, this world's full of evildoers, craziness and evil. And here in America, all the wickedness and sinfulness and perversion and just craziness. And well, if you're not careful, you're just kind of, if you're not careful, you start fretting. Lord, what? You know, you just fret. But I appreciate God telling me, God's encouraging me. I was reading this afternoon and God encouraged me. He said, Reggie, don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Don't get all bent out of shape. Don't go, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, I can't believe what's going to happen. God says, don't, that word fret is a bad word. Fretting is a bad thing to do. God does not want you and I fretting. In fact, three times in this Psalm, God is going to tell you and I, don't fret. Fret not. Don't be oh, worrying and all exercise. No, I'm going to tell you something. Look what it says. Don't, fret not thyself because of evil doers. I'll tell you, there's people producing pornography. There's, I never saw such wickedness and vileness and perversion going on in this country. There's craziness everywhere. I mean, it's just there's people stealing from the taxpayers through the government. And it just there is no end to the evil doers. God says, don't fret yourself about it. Amen. How many like join me? And I just make my, I say, you know what? If God says, don't fret about it, I'm not going to fret about it. Why should I fret about it? And then he said, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You know, you look around, you just seem like it pays people to be wicked. I mean, it just seems like the wickeder you are, the more money you make and the better off it gets. (laughs) I'm serious now. Just be honest about it. You know, a lot of times that's the way it looks. Here's why God said, don't fret about it. Verse number two, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withers the green earth. God says, ain't no use you worrying about that. I've got it done to control. I'm in, I'm in charge. And God says, they're going to be cut down. You and I don't need to be fretting about the evil doers. I'm telling you right now, these people beheading these people stuff, they're going to burn in hell if they don't get saved. And I promise you, God's going to cut them down. And, and if it lasts, the, think about this. God says a thousand years is a day in his sight and a day is a thousand years. For you and I, it seems like man alive, how long is this going to go on? There's a chapter in the, there's a Psalms that says, Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? You know, sometimes you think, Lord, how long have these, you know, to be honest about it, these, these liberals and progressives win these elections and they put these stupid laws and do all the stupid stuff. You can't even t- turn on any kind of news without hearing some bad news or there's some more stuff they're doing. But it's not very long in the economy of God. And God says, I don't want my people fretting about it. That's not to say that we shouldn't be concerned. That's not to say that we shouldn't do what we can do. But God doesn't want you and I fretting on it. And I think that's a big encouragement. That's a big encouragement to me. Because you know what? What good am I going to do my wife or you people if I'm just fretting all, all week long? We're not going to do our children any good fretting around about everything. And, I'll, and, and God is going to take care of it. He said they shall soon be cut down. Now that, so that's, that's what we, next thing in verse number two, he says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. You know what? Our job is not to fret about all the evil and the wicked going on, but our job is to trust in the Lord, do good. And he said, do you do that? You're going to dwell in the land. You'll be fed. How many has got been fed so far? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so far we've been fed. And God says, listen, get off of that. Get away from that mentality. You trust in the Lord. Number, verse number three. The next thing is delight, delight thyself in the Lord. You know something? I've made up my mind years ago. And be honest with you. What happened to me from the time I quit being religious to when I got saved? You know, I was religious and I got saved. I got converted. I got born again. Instead of church being a drudgery to me, it became a delight. And I want to tell you something, it is wonderful to delight in the Lord. You know, I delight in my children, I delight in my grandchildren, you know, and I would like to hope that they delight in their father. And I want to tell you something, that's what God, I want God to know, I delight in him, I delight in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It's not weariness for me to serve him, to talk to him, to read his word, to commune with him, to walk. Uh, we, you know, I'm telling you something. Uh, Brother Joel preached a message on delighting in the Lord one time, and I've never forgotten that message. And we ought to delight. God says, delight in the Lord, delight thyself also, Lord, and he should give thee desires of thine heart. What a verse, what a statement. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Then look at the next thing he says to the righteous. He said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Boy, I mean, that's a commitment. We're talking about a commitment. We're not talking about just a a little deal here. We're going to commit our way unto the Lord, trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And so these are things that God says to the righteous man. In verse number six, he said, he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. And look at the next thing God says to the righteous. Rest in the Lord. Rest in him. Rest in him. Not much rest going on in this whole world. I guess sleeping pills sell it, selling like wild, hot, hot cakes at the county fair. God says, rest in the Lord. You know, there's a lot of junk going on. By the way, you are living in the Laodicean church age. You're living in the last section of the biblical church age. You're living in the day of apostasy. And I don't, I'm going to tell you this. I never dreamed that I would see in America when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, even 20 some years. I never dreamed I would see America do what I never dreamed we'd elect a Muslim as president in this country. I never dreamed we'd see sodomites just wide open and see political people covering and justifying all. I never dreamed. I, look, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. But I'm going to tell you something. God knew the time that I was born in. God knows the time you're born in. And God will give you and your family grace in this time. I tell you, he gave grace in all other kinds of times, and there's been a lot rougher times than you're living in, and God gave people the grace to do it with. I want to get encouragement. I need comfort. Every once in a while, I need to read this psalm, just remind myself, don't be fretting, Reggie. Don't be all bent out of shape about this stuff. God knows. I want to tell you something. Sodom, how long did Sodom go on until God put it out? How long was it? 120 years God waited in the days of Noah. God's just. God's righteous. He's going to take care of this thing. He doesn't want you. He wants us to trust in him, to delight in him, to commit our way unto him. And to rest in him. And he said, wait patiently for him. And here it is. The second time it says, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Uh, if you, you're a strange cat. If you don't once in a while look around you and say, you know what? That guy's as wicked as hell itself and seem like everything he touches turns to gold. You're kind of a strange cat. If that doesn't kind of every once in a while, if you're not careful, if you're flesh, you kind of get you. God says, don't you fret about someone who prospers in his way. And he said, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Don't fret about it. Don't fret about it. I'm telling you this much, and I, I'm not very good at this one. Jesus said, lay your treasures up in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt and thieves do not break through and steal and so forth. And I'm not real good at really grabbing a hold of that truth. But the truth about it is, everything you and I have down here, we're going to leave. I don't care what it is. The land you live on, somebody else is going to own it someday. Everything you have, we, we, there's nothing we can take with us except our children to heaven. But heaven is eternal, and our inheritance there is eternal. I was looking at passages of scripture this afternoon on reigning with Christ. It is an amazing truth. And we need to get a hold of this. We five or six times the Bible says we are going to reign and rule with Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? You talk about a future ahead of us that the saints of God will reign and rule, not just in the millennial reign, but in the eternal kingdom, we're going to reign and rule with the Lord Jesus Christ. That makes what we're doing right now look like nothing. Amen. This is nothing. And so don't get shook. You know what? Some of you, most of, m- most, most of us are not going to have great riches. That's just the fact of it. You know what? Having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. But our inheritance, our deal is on the other side. And that takes faith to accept that. You know, I like to be comfortable in this life and have things. And we all want to provide for our families. But the truth about it is. Our inheritance is on the other side. And this is true faith because if you're not careful, your whole focus is on right now, man, what can I get out of this life? But God really teaches us different than that. He really does. Well, let's look at some other things God says to do. He said, cease from anger and forsake wrath. And here's the third fret not. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Did you know what he's teaching there? The same thing he preaches when he said this anger and this wrath, it'll wind up causing you to do evil. It'll make you do wrong. So he said, don't do that. Don't let stuff get you hot. Don't you let stuff get you angry and full of wrath. And he said, and don't fret yourself to do evil. I'm telling you something. You listen to me. There's going to be some American people who are going to do some wild things. There's going to come a point where the American people are going to get tired of some things. And you're going to see some violence. Because they're saying, if our government will not fight this thing, we will. 
If the government's going to do nothing, you're going you're gonna to see you're going to see some daddy, some uncle, some nephew whose relatives have been mowed down by some Muslims. They're going to get sick and tired of it, and they're going to take the law in their own hands. They're going to wipe them out. You're going to see some things happen. God's telling you and I, vengeance is mine. I'll repay, saith Lord. That does not mean you shouldn't defend your families and take care of your homes and families. I'm not talking about that at all, but I'm talking about, listen, if, you, if you're not careful, you'll fret, 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 and you'll get, instead of being controlled by the Holy Spirit, we'll be controlled by our anger and our, and our frustration of what's going on. And uh, God doesn't want that force. And he says to rest. He says to cease from anger. And here's the reason, verse number nine, for evildoers shall be cut off. I promise you, I promise you, God will deal with them. God will get them. Hey, I want to ask you tonight, what about the people who were burned at the state Christian people? What about the people who were fed the lies? You think, you talk about taking faith. God, where are you now? But they knew God will take care of it. God will balance that scale out. God will bring them into judgment. And he has and he will. By the way, did you know the people that burned your ancestors at the stake have already went into eternity and have faced God for their actions? The people that throw the Christians to the lions, they're in eternity now. And if they didn't get saved, they're burning right now in hell. And forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, they will be tormented in the bowels of hell. God will take care of it, folks. When he takes care of it, take care of it, be right. Look at the next thing. God says, the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. By the way, folks, that's going to happen. You and I are going to inherit this earth in the millennial reign, and we're going to delight ourselves in the abundance of peace, and we're going to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to be an exciting time. You don't want to miss it. Now, he moves now to the wicked. And here's what the wicked men, uh, wicked are doing. Verse 12, the wicked plotteth against the just. Did you hear that? If you are living justly, you're living for the Lord. Did you know there, there are wicked people all over America right now that are plotting to totally disintegrate Christianity from off the face of this nation? There are people who want to wipe off every vestige. I'm writing an article I told Paul to pray for. I'm writing an article right now entitled, You Will Attend Mosque. You Will Show Up at the Mosque. What really bothers me right now across this country is you've got all kinds of people who under the under the under the flagship of Christianity have a choice where they want, they can either reject. God does not force conversion on anybody. You can go to church. You not go to church. You can accept Jesus or reject him. But when, when, and I'll tell you what's going to happen. A lot of these men that are sitting home tonight watching football and could care less about Jesus Christ, the word of God. Someday their ancestors are going to be forced to a mosque or they're going to have their throats cut if we're not careful. And it's an amazing thing to me that men will sit at the house when they could choose the Lord Jesus Christ, but because I believe God is turning this nation over to judgment because we've rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And they won't have a choice about attending church. Quote, they will go to the mosque, they will bow their heads to Allah, and they will pray or they'll be executed. They have a choice now, but then they won't. Pray for me about that article. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Just the other day, Judge Roy Moore was being uh, interviewed by a CNN reporter. And Judge Moore said, our rights come from God. And that reporter just lashed out at him and said, our rights don't come from God. They come from the collective minds of the people. And he, Roy said, well, then you don't believe in the Constitution then because the Constitution says that our, we have a certain inalienable rights endowed to us by our creator. But I'm telling you, they don't think anything about that Constitution. They despise the Constitution as much as they despise the Bible. Because the Constitution was based upon the Bible. So they hate it. And, uh, but they, they plot and gnash. And they're thinking of how they can get rid of Christianity. And they, they're against the just. Don't ever forget that. Now, God says the wicked plot of the national verse number 13. But look at it. I want to give you something here. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. There's three times in the Bible that God says he will laugh. Here's one of them. The other is in Proverbs chapter 1, and the other is in Psalms chapter 2. And the Bible says three times that there's going to come a day when God laughs at the wicked. He is going to judge them, and they're going to be crying. In fact, Proverbs teaches they're going to be crying out to God and reaching out to God, and God is going to laugh. You may not have that concept of God, but I'm going to tell you, God's got a right to do it and God's going to do it. He said, the Lord shall laugh at him. And here's what I think God's laughing at. You little pipsqueak human being thought that you could override me. You thought you could rebel against me and get by with it. 
You little weak human beings that can't even keep yourselves alive. That you, you have to breathe my air every day. And you think that you're going to rebel and conquer and be successful in rebelling against me. I believe God's going to laugh. I want to tell you something. I don't want to be the person that God laughs at in that day. He said, he is seeth that his day is coming. Can I encourage you tonight? Can I encourage you tonight? That the Sodomites day is coming just like it came in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. They may, they may have their day in America, but that's not going to last in, with God. And the Islams may be having their day and the wicked and the atheist and the ACLU and all this crowd may be having their day. But God sees their true day coming. And I'm glad and I want to be on the side of the Lord. The wicked have drawn their, their sword. They've bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. And that's exactly what's going on. Their sword, the Bible says, shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. God said, that's what I'm going to do to the wicked. You say, well, Reggie, is that the right attitude to have? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if God says he's going to laugh at the day of the wicked and his judgments and vengeance against them, I'm going to laugh. If God says, God says, listen, I want to encourage you by letting you know that it ain't always going to be like it is now, that I'm going to take care of this thing, then I'm going to rejoice in it too. I'm going to be encouraged and I'm going to be comforted by the fact that a just righteous, hey, by the way, a just righteous God has to deal with this wickedness and he will. God would not be righteous nor just if he does not ultimately destroy the wicked. And he will. And I bless his holy name tonight because of what he's going to do. Now look at verse number 16. Whew. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Many wicked. You could put all, you could put uh, Ted Turner, Bill Gates, and whoever else you can think of tonight and all their riches together. And God says, if you're righteous and have a little, you're better off than they are. And that's the truth. I'll tell you what's a profit, man, if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul. You say, Roy, I'll tell you what, I'm struggling paying my bills. Having a hard time making ends meet. Well, God says you're better off and be righteous having a little bit than to have all the money in the country. And be wicked and die and go to hell. And that's just the truth. We have to keep this book focused in our mind. Or you know what you'll do? You'll fret yourself. Because well, I'll tell you what. I ain't making no money. I'm trying to live for Jesus. I'm trying to do what's right. Everything I turn. Everything I do. The, you know this tears up. And the tractor tears up. And the truck tears up. And everything goes south and sour. Hey. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Well verse 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be what? Whew, look at that. I want to be around and see the day when God breaks the arms of the wicked. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be what? Forever. Man, our inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Can I tell you that God is going to take you through whatever, whatever's happening, whatever's going to go on. God's going to take you through. Verse 20, but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall be, they shall consume in the smoke, shall they consume away the enemies of the Lord. Can I tell you, this country has seen like getting full of enemies of the Lord. And I want to remind us tonight that this is what God says is going to happen to him. Let's get on the right side of this thing. Amen. Let's be sure that we're on the right side of this thing. Verse 21, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. I understand that Ted Turner owns several hundred thousands of acres in Montana. Can I tell you something? He'll own nothing during the millennial reign. Ted, I got news for you. Unless you get saved, somebody else is going to own all of Montana. Mark it down. Amen. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Now look here again at the righteous man. This will encourage. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Underline that, he delighteth in his way. God orders the steps of a good man, and God delights in his way. You know, it kind of blesses my heart to think that God would delight in my way. I want to be a good man. I want, I, want to, I want to obey the Lord. I want to do what's right. 
and on the joy of knowing that God will delight in my way. And I love verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I don't, I don't know about you, but I've experienced that. I have fallen. And if the Lord hadn't upheld me with his hand, I wouldn't have gotten up. I wouldn't have been able ever to have gotten up. I've often thought about that eagle, that daddy eagle who swoops down underneath and picks up that young eagle. And that's, I've all, I always have stayed with that little thought. My father can fly, fly faster than I can fall. And your heavenly father can fly faster than you can fall. Well, next thing he talks about, I've been young and now I'm old yet. I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. My, 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 my. <laughs> preserved forever. If that don't encourage you tonight, you're going to fall. God will pick you up. You're preserved forever. He's not going to forsake you. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. By the way, you know that the Psalms, 150 Psalms, is the core background of all the Psalms is the kingdom. It's about the kingdom and the millennial reign, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ and the eternal kingdom following that. And I'm telling you something, it blesses my heart to think that we're going to inherit the earth. And here's what's really neat. How many knows that this earth is going to be burned with fire and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and we're going to inherit that. And I get to thinking, how many has ever read the story of the first white man that saw the, the sequoias and the big trees? They came over this crest and they looked down in this valley, the first ones they ever seen, and they recorded the majestic, they could not believe what their eyes were seeing. Trees, you know, as big as round as what? I mean, you could drive a car through trees that go up hundreds and hundreds of feet. And they talked about the beauty of the moss, the untouched beauty of it and the waterfalls and everything. And I get excited thinking about, I don't want to miss the new heaven and the new earth. You say, Reggie, now listen, I, and that's the sweet by and by. I'm living in the nasty now, now. Well, you know what? This, this nasty now, now is going to pass off, but we're going to be forever in the sweet by and by. See, I really get excited when I was a kid and the preacher talk about heaven and streets of gold. I just could not get excited about it. I wanted to run home after church and go out in the woods before I had to go get on streets of gold and spend the rest of my life. <laughs> it never did much for me. And I, I guess maybe I'll like it better than I think I would. But after a while, I would rather see trees and water and grass than streets of gold. Let's be honest with you. I'd really, you know, but maybe I don't understand it all, you know, but that, I know that's the city. But I'm telling you tonight, there's a new heaven and a new earth. And it's going to be in perfect righteousness and it's not going to be cursed by sin. And I'm telling you, the tomatoes, they won't have worms in them. Amen. You won't have to, they won't be, you won't pick and roast an ear and it have worms up there. It'll be just perfect. I'm telling you something. There won't be spiders biting you and there won't be snakes biting you and you won't have to worry about any of that. It's a new heaven. You know something? When you get to be, I'm 61 and I'm not old. I'm just barely hitting my stride. Lie number one. But I'm telling you, hey, listen, my mom and daddy's not here tonight. And you know, and I've not been around. The truth about it is our family's never experienced much death. But the truth about it is, and my mom and daddy knows that time is short for them. You know, if they live to be 100, why, you know, it's still not long. But you get to thinking more and more about it. You know, we're going to pass off the scene. I look at my kids. They're having all these kids. Just yesterday, Karen and I got married, and we were having our first child, and then our second child, and we were where they are. And how it happened all these years? How did it go by so fast? And I think, my land of living, we're on a downhill slide, and it's going so fast. But you know what? I encourage myself. But if, if, we did, if it was just this life, wouldn't it be dismal in a way? But you know what makes me happy to think that my daddy will have a new glorified body and my mama will have a new glorified body. And we'll be in heaven together and eternity together. And we're not going to be sick and aged anymore. And this is what God's trying to tell you. He's trying to tell you, get your eye. Don't fret about all this sin and wickedness and disease and sorrow and pain and misery that you see. Get your eyes on eternity. It'll be wonderful. It's going to be good. Amen. And so he says there the, the, in verse number uh, uh, 
Where was I at? Verse number 27, verse 28. The Lord loveth judge, for his seed will preserve forever, and the wicked will be cut off. Verse 29. The righteous shall inherit the land, dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. Now he wrote, goes back talking about the wicked now in verse 32. And we finish up. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. That's what the devil's doing too, isn't it, by the way? That old devil, he's just absolutely just trying to trip you up all the time. Wicked, watch the righteous. The Lord will not, watch this, verse 33. Hey, hang on to this promise. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Amen. Verse 34, God tells us again, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. How many, have you picked up how many times God has talked about inheriting the land, inheriting the land, inheriting the earth, inheriting the earth? It is a real thing. It is not some spiritualization allegory. We're going to inherit the earth. And I'm telling you something. It's going to be an eternal thing. And he said, when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Look at verse number 35. Watch it now. This is the reason you shouldn't fret about the wicked and how well they're doing. I have seen the wicked in great power. (coughs) (coughs) Let me tell you something tonight. The presidency of the United States has a lot of power. Ain't no question about it. And there's a lot of um, wickedness in great power in the United States. Supreme Court justices have a lot of power. I'll tell you, you need to pray for Judge Roy Moore in Alabama. He's defying the Supreme Court tonight. Amen. He is defying the Supreme Court. He's standing on the Constitution. And he needs prayer and encouragement. If you can have a chance to email him or call him and encourage him, he is standing. By the way, the Supreme Court is not supreme. But God said, he, the psalmist said, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. There's going to come a time when all this big shot, all this big power, all this spreading like a green bay tree. And by the way, do you know what the liberals really think? They really feel like, man, they are winning the culture war. They're going to turn this country and they're going to get rid of the puritanical pilgrimage uh, Christianity. And they're going, to get, they're going to do away with all this stuff. But I got news for them. There's a day coming when the most liberal professor in the most liberal college in the United States is going to get on his knees. He's going to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to confess publicly and openly with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I am going to laugh my head off. I am going to enjoy the sight. I want to ask you tonight, uh, John Stewart, a mocker. One of the greatest mockers of America right now, Christianity. These scientists who mock creation. Isn't it going to be fun to watch these scientists who deny the creative God? I think it's going to be fun to watch, watch them have to get on their knees before Almighty God and confess that Jesus Christ, I believe he'll say, and add to that creator. <laughs> it's going to happen, folks. Can I tell you something tonight? That Ruth Ginsburg Amen. is going to get on her knees and bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with her tongue, with her even Hillary Clinton is going to get on her knees and bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and confess that he alone is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. What a happy day. I'm going to sing, oh, happy day. (laughs) Amen. I'm going to. I'm looking so forward to that. And I'm really excited about seeing Barack Obama. Get on his knees. And I think God is going to do something real special. He said, Brock, you're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. And you're going to denounce Allah. And you're going to denounce Muhammad. And Muhammad Ali. And you're, going to, you're going to denounce all that junk right now. And he's going to bow before Jesus Christ. You mark it in your day book. It is coming. And God says, don't be fretting about all this junk. Because I tell you what's coming. They're going to bow too, and they're going to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll just be honest with you. Maybe it's a bad attitude, but I'm looking forward to the sight. I am. I'm looking forward to the sight. Well, he said in verse number 37, 
Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. You may say, Reggie, where is the peace that God promised me? Well, in this world, it's swords. The only peace you're going to have is that peace with God in your heart. But they knock, outside that, you ain't going to experience much peace in this world. Now, God told you that. But the end, we're going to see peace. By the way, you know how peace is going to come? It's going to come through powerful military victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you like it or not. He is going to put down all rule and reign against him. He's going to slay and to kill. Let me tell you, let me tell you how peace is going to come. The blood's going to flow in the Jezreel Valley, bridle deep to a horse. It will be what Ronald Reagan said, peace through strength. They will submit and bow and be whipped. He will destroy them with the brightness of his coming. I mean, I don't know tonight. I may, may, may snow a foot out there before we get home, but I'm going to uh, tonight encourage myself. God gave me this Psalms to read. He gave me this to encourage me tonight and to keep my focus where it really ought to be. Verse number 38, for transgressors shall be destroyed together and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. Notice the contrast. The end of the righteous man is peace, but the end of the wicked, they shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, and he is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because of how good they are. Because they trust in him. All right, let's stand and go home tonight. God bless you for coming. I appreciate it. Love you in the Lord. And so... Whenever you're tempted to say, well, I don't know why he gets to drive a better pickup truck than I do. Just don't worry about it. Amen. Give it to the Lord. Bob, dismiss us tonight, would you please?